Okay, so um, so you probably got an email that uh, I uh, send out the uh, the resources, including the reference implementation for Homework Six. Just reminds you that Homework Six is a uh, a group project. Um, so the idea. Let me actually use this slide to explain that uh, if you saw the lecture that I gave in the spring, that this is essentially will be done for homework six, has, it, it's, a, it's a program that's, that has a both client side and server side, and you're going to implement both client side and server side. But the client side, the, the program is already given to you in the reference implementation, and also it, it uh, extended from your homework five. So what you really need to work on is, is on the on the server side for this one. It's kind of funny, but you're going to work on the server side. So you provide the client from your reference implementation to test it against your implementation of the server, which is not complete. And, and essentially, the server is implementing two functions. One is called update. One is called search. And this is a slide I prepare for um, for uh, fall 2020 because um, um, now we have uh, JDOM instead of uh, having this uh, uh, JSON to merge, those kind of um, uh, post-merge, those kind of uh, functions. Professor? Uh, yes. Oh, prof uh, professor, you're not sharing the screen. That's very good point. Perfect. Okay. Let me close. Now you can see my screen, right? Yeah, now it's Thank fine. you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for, for letting me know. Okay. Otherwise, people are in the dark. Okay. So this this is the, the slide from I think lecture number 14. Uh, by the way, lecture number 14 is about um, homework six, but lecture number 15, I talk about some kind of segmentation for and memory issue. I, I would like to just remind you, those issues are actually very practical and very important for um, the, uh, the C++ programmer to know the difference about how to allocate memory and what's the scope of the memory. So this is on the slide. We have a client side and server side. We implement two functions. One's called update and one's called search. So you can think about at the higher level, that update is just sending a post. So what do I mean by sending a post? Uh, if you think about that on Facebook, when you, when you actually um, want to participate in a discussion, I mean, technically you can download the whole post and you can update leaving a comments or adding some reaction, and then you just upload the, the post to the, uh, to the server. And the server is going to have a copy that's included your new, newest comment or newest reaction or, or any other update you have. So that's called update. So essentially update is updating either a new or an existing post with new information. So that, that's, the, that's the update part. And the search part is essentially, you can think about over time, the server is going to accumulate a good number of um, uh, posts from all kinds of issues, from uh, election, from uh, sports, and from food network, from any kind of uh, entertainment business. And the thing is that you specifically look for certain um, posts, certain content, and that's the functionality of a search. So we kind of reduce that search capability to the, the idea of a keyword. So essentially you're basically sending a keyword and the server is going to give you all the posts that actually contain that keyword. So that, that's the uh, a simplified version about the update and the search you're going to implement uh, as a team for homework assignment number six. Okay, so this is the slide. The next slide is actually I, I uh, um, prepare for, for this class for homework uh, for fall 2020. And the reason I have to do this is uh, because in the lecture I recorded in spring, at that time we only have dump J, but we don't have J dump. We're doing something else. But now uh, the code is more structured to have a symmetric, 
one is uh, dump J and one is J dump. So now I'm going to tell you that first in the reference implementation, you will see that hw6server.cpp. Uh, let me just quickly tell you what how it looks like in case you haven't get a chance to um, to actually see it. Hold on one second. Yeah, I think it's this one. Just a very quick. So this is this is if you take a look at the code of HW6 uh, um, server uh, .cpp is is the structurally it's very similar to your homework three as well as uh, homework four uh, when you do this kind of uh, JSON RPC related stuff. So everything is the same. It's really uh, similar except. Uh, of course, now it's called homework six, but then they have, oh, hold on, there are two functions that you're going to implement. One is HW6 server update, which, which I actually didn't provide any, any implementation because I want to give you the freedom to do whatever you want. By the way, um, you're free to update other piece of code in the reference implementation as well. I will explain to you why, because some of the idea you can actually implement inside HW6 server.cpp, but some of the idea is actually better to implement maybe in other uh, data structure to kind of change a little bit, to extend it, to do the, the, the thing you like to do. So there are two functions, one is update and one is search. Okay, those two functions, you're going to implement that, but you feel free to use the reference implementation, but you are also free to modify other pieces as well. As long as you can actually demonstrate your client code is actually working with your server code in the, in the semantics of, uh, of HW6 um, um, uh, update, HW6 search. Okay, I'm actually going back change here. All right, I'm coming to this, this slide because this is the slide I like to go over today. All right, so uh, that, that's, the, the, that's the program I just showed you, hw6server.cpp. You can see that it actually have a two function. One is uh, update, one is search. So here, I'm actually gonna tell you what I expect uh, your, this two function are going to do. To, to actually get the, the credit for homework assignment number six, okay? So let's actually talk about the, the update first, okay? So update for, is essentially when you send the update to this uh, update function, so that, that the parameter is actually the JSON. You can see that the parameter is only one argument, that's the post JSON, that's actually the, the equivalent of your homework uh, five, that the output of that JSON, that you're going to output that. And maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's just a part of it because it's an update, okay? So essentially what you need to do is that when you receive that, of course you need to go through the post.jdump, which is this function has all the elements is actually going to handle that. By the way, there's one important thing uh, the difference between the uh, inside the post.cpp with the homework five post.cpp. I mean, of course, homework five, uh, you already received the, the, the JDOM function uh, in, in the post.cpp, and you also have the, the um, homework six, you have the post.cpp. The one major difference is that in the homework six for post.cpp, um, I actually include the, the keywords as well. So that's, that's the main difference because, because in homework five, we don't need to worry about the key. But now in homework six, I will, I will be able to handle the key. So, so what's the key format looks like? I actually uh, show you last time, but I just want to go back to just remind you that the, the new, the difference is actually this, exactly.
So I provide a, a couple JSON for you to um, uh, kind of test it. You, you can see that now this is a JSON that you can test your program, but this program has, you can neglect the history. By the way, I should have get rid of history. The history, uh, the dump J, J dump is just get rid of that because they, they won't process history. But that, that was the uh, homework seven last year, okay, for history. But you can see that this part is the key. So the, the new version of post.cpp does contain code to process the keys as an array of keywords um, um, correctly. So you can just use the post.cpp, the new version of post.cpp, which will handle that. Okay, so that is, that is the main difference uh, between the post.cpp between homework five and homework six, just to let you know. All right, so let me actually go back here. So essentially when you receive this JSON from the client, that you're going to call post.json, uh, call.jdump in order to convert that string into a, a C++ post object. So in this process that you're actually going to determine because the JDOM is going to check whether the, the input uh, JSON is really a, a valid post object. For example, does it have a valid uh, post ID, which is important because if you don't have a valid post ID, I'm not going to continue to process this as a post. So essentially, if the post that JDOM, when you actually process that, this, by the way, this, should, this piece of code, <laughs> should be into the, the HW6 server.cpp. You're going to call this function to actually find that out. So if the, 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 the output is okay, that means JDOM actually take it saying that, okay, syntactically, semantically, this post JSON looks okay. Then you need to find a way to save this post. Okay, you have to save it. Okay, so when I say save a copy, I actually means that I give you the freedom about whatever way you would like to save it. So you can actually save it in a file. So like what I did is I save every post is a file. And so later, the reason I want to save a copy is that if I don't save a copy, then I cannot do the search because I need to be able to search later. Okay, so you can actually save a copy on a hard disk. So it means that even the server code is, is, is uh, crash, is, is killed. You restart the server code, you can still find the, the, the object, the, the post. That is what we call the persistent object. Okay, you have to find a way to save it. But the other way to save it, I mentioned like uh, last week, I said, this is your option. I'm not going to require you to do persistent object. You can also save it in memory, but the, just to let you know that um, this is not going to cost you any, any points, but uh, when you do it that way, uh, when the, the, the process is gone, then that post is gone as well. So it means that if you run the demo scenario, if you want to run it again, you have to update again, okay? So just, just to let you know, that's the difference. If you save it in memory, if it die, you want to run it again, you need to update. But if you're doing a persistent way, save a copy as a file in your local file system, then essentially um, when you run it, you don't need to do update again. You can just continue uh, run the search immediately. Okay, so that's the number one. Receive a post, do a JDOM to check, and then you have to save a copy. Okay, that's, that's the number one thing you need to do with update. Number, the second thing you need to do is that, well, sometimes you receive a post, but that post might already already exist. So because you save a copy and uh, that, that one may be either in memory or in uh, your, your file system. So in any case, if you actually see the post already exists, you need to merge, you need to merge them. So the update is not just saying that update the new one. For example, somebody update with a new comment and new uh, reaction, then you're going to merge that in such that the only copy about the post on the server will actually as a result of the merging. So this is essentially similar to your homework assignment number five. However, because you have done your homework assignment number five already, you probably know 
that the merge is actually, there is not much you need to do because each level of the code, even in the reference implementation, they already compare all the difference. And your code in the comment.cpp and reaction.cpp also actually check whether they are duplicate or you sh they should be merged. So this suppose, in theory, already taken care of by your homework assignment number five. The only thing you just need to check the post ID and then just merge with the right uh, um, post object, then you're done, okay? So number two, I, I said it here, not much to be done here, but just make sure that you have the correct copy correct implementation from your homework assignment number five. Okay, and now this number three is the new thing. Okay, number one, number two, you should be somewhat familiar with what's going on. But number three is something which is new, you need to implement in the update. So essentially, now you see that the new post you're receiving has the keys, means the keywords. So essentially, you need to build uh, the, the record about which posts related to which keys. So, so for example, if I have a key called uh, Felix, then you want to be able to pull out all the posts that actually have contained the key Felix. And so when you do the search, then that, that part is easy. You can just follow this data structure to retract it. Otherwise, you have to actually be able to look at every single post. So we require you for this part that you, you have to find a way, you decide whatever you want to do, but you have the way to, to know for each of the different keyword, what are the posts is associated with this key. Okay, by the way, this association, again, you can keep that association in the memory or in the hard disk in the file system. So what I implement, I always implement in the, in the file system because I really like the idea of a persistency. It means that you can just keep doing update and uh, I will keep tracking that on my file system. Um, and then if, if something uh, uh, goes wrong, my server crash, I still have a copy I can easily recover from that. Okay, that's why uh, in your reference implementation, you see there are two subdirectory under my server subdirectory and my client directory. One of the, um, the subdirectory is called uh, OKs and one subdirectory is called posts. So posts essentially is a directory I actually keep my number one, I save my file. And the OK directory is essentially I keep uh, for, for the information for number three which is I'm actually uh, continually check for each of the keyword, what are the post ID that's associated with that. So, so that, that's how you need to do update for these three things and make sure that um, the update is successful and you can actually see that either in memory or the file. I mean, the other thing which I like about persistent file, a persistent object is that when you're saving the file, it's really easy for me to debug because I can always go to the directory to see if that file has been saved correctly. I can see that. I mean, to, to save in the memory sometimes it's kind of hard because once the, mach the, the, the program died, then everything is gone. I, I lost all the track. Okay, so just to let you know there are, there are options, but, but that's your option. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about search. Okay, before I talk about search, any question for the update? Okay, I'm going to talk about search. So the semantically, what is the search? In fact, if you implement the update correctly, um, the search is relatively simple. Okay, at least in this simplified uh, way of doing search. So essentially what I said before, what is a search? The search is essentially you send the, you can see that now uh, the, in the search, there is only one parameter, which is the search JSON. So you basically provide a, a JSON that's actually uh, represent the keyword you like to search. So just show you what the search JSON looks like. The JSON, let me see where am I, not this one. This is my Python development. Okay. By the way, this program, I actually also have a Python version, just to let you know. 
Um, okay, here is a search cost. So there is a search class as an example. This is the parameter. You can just send it when you do the search. And it really have just one, um, one uh, um, um, key value pair is the keyword and the one key. Okay, one keyword. So to make it simplify, I mean, of course, you should be able to enter multiple keyword, sentence, but that's more advanced. But right now, let's just focus on one keyword. One key, you send it over there. That, that's, that's all you need to worry about for homework assignment number six, okay? All right, so you basically send the search keyword and the return from the search function is essentially a JSON array which contain a lot of posts. So assuming this keyword uh, will map to five different posts. So each of the posts is a JSON. Each of the posts is JSON. So you essentially you have an array of five elements and each of the element is one JSON and you send the whole thing. So it's essentially is an array of five JSON. Each of them represent a post, get sent back to your uh, client. So that's, that's, the, that's the search is going to do. So how you're going to implement, the, the way to implement search, you can think about this way. Of course, you might find other clever way to do this is that um, if you do number, if you do update correctly, your step three is going to really help me to, to accomplish this very easily. Because I'm actually going to first look at the keyword you want to search. And then I'm actually going to the, the keyword that, uh, that I provide for the tracking for the key to find out that particular key and find out all the post ID that's actually associated with that key. And then what I did is I just basically pulled out all the posts that's actually on that list and then do a J dump to come, uh, no, dump J. At this moment is dump J. I just convert that post into uh, a JSON format and then append it uh, to, to the, or push back to the, to, the, um, to the JSON array. And at the end, I would just send the whole array uh, back to the um, server. That's to the client. I think the reference indication even give you a little bit hint on that. Let me actually just pull it up very quickly. No, I didn't. I didn't provide too much. Yeah. It's just, just, it's an array uh, is in the, put it in the result JSON and then you can pull it out. Okay. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I, I kind of remove everything uh, from, from that, those two function. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's the search. This two function is what you need to implement. So you, you have both server, you're both client and uh, you need to provide uh, a few test scenario and to actually test whether your client in the server uh, is working correctly as expected as described in the in this uh, in this um, um, format so um, when I'm doing the testing of your program what I what I will do the not me but the TA when they grade your homework uh, they're going to use uh, a couple of JSON and we're going to do the update. And this sum of the JSON is actually related. Think about your homework assignment number five. So I'm going to update the first JSON, which is a base JSON. And then I'm going to update the, the uh, update one, right? The, the new one. And instead of merge locally, now this two JSON is going to post it's going to merge at the server side. So once it's a merge, then we're going to do the search of the keyword to actually pull it back. And we want to check if the result is actually equivalent, just like what you got in homework assignment number five. Uh, the, the, the merge result is going to be the same. Okay, so that, that's the, the, um, the homework assignment. Okay, essentially we're kind of split the homework um, five into client server, but then we add in the concept of key. So you can actually have a way to retrieve the, the post that you like. Okay, um, that, that's, that's what I want to talk about for homework assignment number six. I'm just wondering any question. 
Professor. Yes. Uh, for the keyword, are you comparing that against each message within a post, or if it is it just if the keyword is within the just, JSON? Just the key. Just just the. Uh, 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 that's that's a good question. So we are, of course, we can actually do a very very complicated one, but but for this homework assignment, we try to simplify, and we only compare the the key the keyword in the in the keys section so let me let me do this this is in the reference implementation so you can see that let me just just do this if you do okay this is a post um you see that this this session as it's called keys okay so essentially every post if it's searchable okay if it's a searchable it will have this keys um, and then the keys is actually going to be an array of three different uh, keywords so essentially in the search if you say site glass you will actually receive this post as one of the posts associated with that uh, um, uh, search or if you enter the keyword blue bottle or you enter the keyword uh, tartan, you're going to get uh, the, the, this post. I mean, you could have other posts also have this keyword, but this post would definitely do it. So don't, don't check against the comment, other, just check for keys. Okay. Is that, uh, is that, it has is that to okay? be. That makes sense. Uh, and it has to be a complete word. It's not partial or anything like that. Just right, completely right. matching. Okay. Right, right. It has to be complete matching. Okay, um, let, let me just tell you I what I did. Okay, um, let, let me actually show you. In the reference implementation, we, we did a little bit more than that to avoid a lot of uh, trouble. But let me actually just tell you that this. By the way, this code is actually in your in your in your hand, so you can actually take a look at this. Um, you see that I what I did. I have a function called convert key. So every keyword in the key section or the uh, or the um, or in the in the um, uh, the search clause that I actually convert everything to lowercase. So basically, this becomes case insensitive. Okay, so you can see that I actually use this function to lower. I convert every single character to to lowercase. And also, uh, I check whether you are, you, you have to, the, the keyword cannot be uh, this kind of random character, okay? Because somebody put a, like a, a Unicode, whatever, the, it messed up the, the, pro, the, the matching process. So, so in the program, I have a function called convert key, which provided to you. I'm actually checking whether you are, you're actually uh, doing the right thing. So essentially everything has to be, first has to be those characters. So of course it's A to Z, A to Z, zero to nine, and also those special characters such as uh, uh, space, uh, hyphen, whatever. I already include all the character there, okay? If you include any character other than this character, that character will be removed and uh, just neglected, okay? So that, that's the process we kind of convert all the key to a more, uh, I mean, okay, just share with you an interesting story. I, I kind of enjoyed this experience in my spring uh, 2020 ECF uh, 36B. And I have a group of students, they try to stress test the server because I actually provide a search engine and the student stress test my my uh, my search engine um, in the way they actually produce all kind of random key they use all kind of way sometimes the key is huge sometimes the key contain lots of strange character so I have to um, um, guard it to actually really doing a lot of check otherwise uh, a lot of logical bug will come up so it was an interesting experience I, if you actually saw the code, uh, I actually did one thing, uh, which is really interesting, is I'm actually checked the time. Means that I don't allow 
um, um, a particular request to update too often. For example, somebody just send, somebody actually wrote the code to send update like uh, immediately. So you can think about every millisecond that this program is generating an update. So essentially what he was doing is that essentially he saturated the server, no other student can actually talk to the server again. So that was, that was a very interesting experience. So I have to check uh, a lot of information to actually say, no, no, you're, you're doing this. You have to send another one at least for like a five to 10 seconds that you can come in. Okay, so just to let you know, that's why there are this kind of testing function that was built in there to make sure that uh, we, can, we can handle those kind of extreme cases. Okay. All right, any other question? Uh, professor? Yeah. Uh, could you please publish the, the lecture recording on last Friday? Okay, okay. I, I probably forgot to do that. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was meeting with students until almost like a seven o'clock. Uh, so I forgot after I done that. Okay, I will do that. I will publish both today and uh, last Friday. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, by the way, could you please go back to the slide that you introduced the process of the homework six? Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I will update the slide as well. Okay, I, I'm having this uh, newer slides. I should probably update uh, so you will actually see this uh, slide as well, right? Any other question before I uh, pause uh, and then we move to breakout room? Um, I had a question, Professor. Sure. <clears throat> um, do you have uh, like a demo of this program working uh, the way you want it to work? Um, like the completed version, like how it's supposed to, or what's the output is supposed to look like? Do you have a demo of that? Sure, I can do that. Why don't I do that now? Will that be okay? Sure, that's fine. <clears throat> Okay, you can see that it's generated a few programs. One is called HW6 Search, one is HW6 Server, the other one is HW6 uh, Update. Those three programs are basically uh, the, the relevant one. And the HW6 test is really just testing some, whether the, the different pieces will work together. Okay, so you typically need to have a two window. One window, this one is the, is the um, uh, server window, okay? And uh, as if I mentioned, remember I said, server window has two subdirectory. One is O key, one is a post. Let me actually just remove everything if I have that so I can have a fresh start. Okay, it's already removed. Let me see post. Okay, there's nothing on the server. Okay, so now I'm going to my client. Okay, you can see that. Let's, let's do the same thing again. Okay, OK, star, remove everything. Oh, there's no such things there already. Oh, I probably already removed uh, yesterday. Okay, it's removed. I have, so you should have, you should see this, this five thing in your program. That's actually have a two sample posts and uh, you have a two subdirectory that's empty and you have a search clause and the search clause the search clause is, has a keyword called Kira. So let me actually check which one has Kira. I forgot, it must be one of the posts has Kira. Uh, yes, the, the, uh, the first post has Kira. Okay, the, um, the second post, sorry, the second post has Kira. All right, so now I'm, I'm having client server, so I'm gonna run the server first. 
okay, now the server is running. And of course you can, because both client side and server side is on your hand, you decide how you're going to set up the port number. I already have a default port number being set up in the, in the reference implementation. You don't need to even modify the, their, their match with each other, okay? So now the server is running and now I'm going to run the client. So I'm, first let's try to do the update. So I will do HW6 update and I would like to do the, the second post because it has the keyword key rod I'm going to search uh, earlier. So when I hit this, you can see that it's actually uh, a request, but it's actually also uh, sent back uh, a copy. So one important thing for you to know is that after you run the program, you can see that the okey, now the, the okey directory has a bunch of uh, files which keep tracking each of the key associated with the, the post. So, so you can see that uh, there are four keywords, so I'm actually creating four okey files. So let's actually take a look at the okey file. For example, okey Kira is basically the, the, the file looks like now there is only one, uh, one um, uh, post. Of course, I mean, uh, I should probably update. I'll, I'll update another one so you can see that there is another file here. And, and then this, this basically say that if somebody search Kira and this is the post you should have, all right? So let me actually just, since I'm here, I'm actually going to do a little bit different. Let me see, CP post. So let me actually copy this post. Let's copy this to 80. Okay, I just changed the post ID a little bit. Okay, and let me change, because I changed that, I have to, I have to do this. I have to change this to 80. So essentially I create, and let's actually just get rid of some of the key, but just, just have key run. Okay, everything else should be the same. Let me message is just update the message a little bit. Okay, now I have another post. Uh, then I will update post again, but this will create two different posts, of course. Okay, now this is update to the 80. Okay, so I have another post, but now let's look at the OK directory. It's still this five, but you can see that now every, everybody is, is still the same size, but except this Kira, if now you look at OK, Kira, now it has two posts because both posts actually have the same. Okay, so this is actually from the client side, but let's actually go over there to check the server side. So I want to go to the server side, my server. Okay, now you see that there was a few files got generated. One is the, the server update. I, I actually log a lot of things. I provide a set of function to help you to, to build this log very easily. Uh, and, and if you have some question, let me know. But uh, I want to just first go to OK. You can see that it was empty. Now it has essentially the same information because uh, the, the most important one is the one I just show you, Kira. And the Kira has two posts, okay? They are both associated with that. So that's what I mean, you have to keep tracking that. And, and then I have go to the posts. And you can see that the posts actually keep a copy of both of them. So they are matching the, the, um, the post ID. So the, this post ID is matching the first one. The second one is over this one. So the, they essentially keep the post JSON that on the server side directory. Okay. After I done this, okay, now I can do a search. So now I have the Kira and I can do dot dot slash homework six search. 
and I will do search class, and then I will just put the result to, I call the search result, okay? So, okay, so now I'm doing the search using that search class, which contain the word Kira, and now let's actually look at the search result. Okay, so you can see that the search results say, okay, what I did is, uh, sorry, what I did is, um, just do it again. The keyword search, because that was the output by the search program, is that this program was searched for Kira. And I got actually two posts. Remember, it's an array of posts, JSON. So I actually returned two posts, count of two and data. The first one is from here. You can see that the post ID is 79. Okay, 279 at the, at the um, uh, end of the and then it has all kind of keywords. Um, and then uh, be, please take a look, even the keyword is duplicate, but it will not change from the server side. I, I will remove all the redundancy and I only follow the, the, the unique keywords. Okay, that, that was uh, the post number one. And here is a post number two. The post number two, the ID is A0. If you look at the key, the key only have a one key, which is Kira. And then it has a little bit modified content. Okay, so that's the that's the result that you're basically sending it out. Oh, by the way, I should probably remove this. This is uh, I tried to do some kind of debugging. I add a lot. If you saw this, is probably I do a lot of debugging code. That uh, um, um, I was actually dealing with one of the weird memory bug, and uh, myself, and and that's why you see that debugging message. Okay, but this is you you should neglect those but look at this, the result that you have, okay? And, and the other way is, in my program, you don't have to do this. I actually, oh, it's not here. I did, apparently, I didn't save it in the post directory. I only do the output. But you could potentially save a copy. When you do a search, you actually save the post from your local directory as well, okay? Okay, thank oh. you, Professor. That, that really helped. Okay. Good, and you can actually take a look at this, this lecture and look at the demo and also look at the concept and uh, this, this lecture I will upload uh, as soon as possible, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other question before I uh, pause the, the recording? Okay.